the reciprocal of a number 2 would be 1 over 2. So reciprocal trigonometry, trigonometric functions are if you have cosine, the reciprocal of cosine is 1 over cosine. So instead of calling it the reciprocal of cosine, cosine we call this the secant function. So secant goes with cosine and then the reciprocal of sine is 1 over sine and we're going to call that the cosecant function and the shortened is CSC. So cosecant is 1 over sine and then the tangent, the reciprocal is 1 over tangent, which we call the cotangent. So cotangent and tangent are kind of easy to keep together, but cosine you would think with, would go with cosecant, but cosine goes with secant, and sine goes with cosecant, CSC. So if it's a reciprocal, look at A. Suppose sine of theta is 15 over 8. Find the cosecant of theta. So cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. So that is just going to be 8 fifteenths. The ratio 8 fifteenths. And then second one, find the cotangent of 55 degrees to the 100th. So this is the same thing as finding 1 over the tangent of 55. So 1 over the tangent of 55 in your calculator. Make sure that you're in degree mode because we're talking about degree. So I do 1 divided by the tangent of 55 in my calculator and I get approximately 0 .70020, so 0 .70 the nearest hundredth. And then if you have to find the exact value, what you want to do is look how secant, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I'm going to find the cosine of 60 first, and then I'm going to do 1 over the cosine of 60. So cosine of 60 is in your right triangle, in your unit circle, I mean, draw a 60 degree angle, the unit circle always have a has a radius of 1, the short side is 1 half, and the long side is root 3 over 2. So the cosine of 60 is 1 half, so this is going to be 1 over 1 half. And 1 over 1 half is 2, it's positive 2. We're in the first quadrant, so it's positive 2. And then B, the cotangent of 45. So first I'm going to do the tangent of 45. So in a 30, 60, 90, or in a 45, 45, 90, this is 1, this is root 2 over 2, and this is root 2 over 2. So tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. So opposite is root 2 over 2. Adjacent is root 2 over 2. So root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2 is just 1. So it's 1 over 1 because a tangent of 45 is 1. So that's just 1. And the cosecant is matches up with sine. So you're doing 1 over the sine of 30 so sine of 30 is in the first quadrant. This is 1 half. This is root 3 over 2. So the y value is 1 half. So 1 divided by 1 half is 2. It's positive 2. All right, so to graph y equals cosine of x and secant, secant is the <clears throat> reciprocal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, I'm graphing it from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to make my scale right here and go up by pi over 2 and then pi 
and then 3 pi is over 2, and then 2 pi. So first I'm going to, to graph um, y equals secant of x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first graph y equals cosine of x and make a table of that. So I'm going to make a table of values. So the top part, or I'm going to let this be x and this be cosine of x. So if x is 0, what is the cosine of 0? What's the x value? So the x value for the cosine of 0 is 1. Then if I go to, we're talking about in terms of pi. So if I go to pi over 2, that's 90 degrees. So that's up here, pi over 2, that's 0. If I go to pi, that's the x value over here, that's negative 1. And if I go to 2 pi, or 3 pi over 2, which is right here, that's going to be 0, the x value. And then if I go to 2 pi, it's going to be back right here again, and the x value is going to be 1. So I start to repeat. So if you think about secant being 1 over cosine, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reciprocal of, of each of these. Okay, so I'm going to write 1 divided by 1, which is 1. This is going to be 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. Can't do it. This is going to be 1 divided by negative 1, which is negative 1. This is going to be 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. And then 1 divided by 1 is 1. So I'm going to plot the cosine graph. I'm going to graph the cosine. So it's starting from 1 to negative 1. So cosine of 0 is 1. Then it goes 0, down, up, like this. Remember it kind of makes a W? So what's going on with these parts right here, where cosine is 0, it's undefined. So where the cosine of an angle measure is 0, it's undefined. So right there, what you're going to have is you're going to have an asymptote. So cosine is undefined, or the, so this, the secant is going to be undefined, have a vertical asymptote where the cosine is 0 because you can't divide by 0. So I'm going to plot the other points here. So at 1, when it's 0, there's 1 for secant. So 0, 1 is a point. I'm going to do that in red. Um, we already talked about how this point right here was undefined, or this part here is undefined. And then we also know that at pi, it's negative 1. So these, these are matching up right here. So what's happening is, if you think about the reciprocal, it's going to be 1 divided by whatever these numbers are. So the closer this, gets, this function gets to 0 for the y value, the higher the number is going to be. So what's going to happen is this is going to go up. So it's going to take the form of this right here. So if I kept if I kept completing it, it would be these kind of like parabolas, really. Parabolas going this way. And the asymptotes are going to be where the cosine is equal to 0 because you have that number divided by 0 and we can't divide by 0. So we're going to do the same thing with, with tangent and cotangent. So I'm going to make a table of values for tangent. So I made a table of values for tangent right here. So if I make my scale, again I'm going to go from 0 to 2 pi. So this is pi over 2, this is pi, this is 3 pi's over 2, and this is 2 pi. So I'm going to mark off tangent. So remember, 
tangent takes the form of you're graphing it using asymptotes. So the asymptotes for tangent are going up and down right here. Okay, because tangent of pi over 2, if you think about the unit circle, tangent of pi over 2, so pi over 2 is up here. So you can think of tangent being sine divided by cosine. So you're dividing by cosine of x, and right here the y or the x is 0, so it's undefined. So at increments of pi over 2, it's going to be undefined. So that means at increments, these other two increments is when cotangent is going to be undefined. And I wrote this in right here in blue. Okay, so the tangent function is going to look like in blue. So I'm going to draw the tangent function in blue. It's going to look like this. And what's going on with cotangent, it's kind of like directly opposite. So wherever there is an asymptote for tangent, that's where cotangent is zero. And they're gonna and it's gonna slide down. And wherever tangent is crossing the x-axis, right here, right here, and right here, are where the cotangent has asymptotes going to look something like this. Like that. So they're crossing, so you can think of them just being, I guess, reciprocals. So if you if you think about wherever the tangent is 0, then that's where cotangent's undefined. Where tangent's undefined, that's where cotangent is 0. So they flip-flop. Where tangent has an intercept, right here, that's where the cotangent has an asymptote. 